can't believe I did this. I didn't write it down this morning. Can you believe? I watched Brother Grubbs fight with it up here this morning. It looks like I'm going to, too. Praise God. I want that scripture in Jesus told him that's the no wonder I'm not seeing it. I'm in Acts. Verse 37. Looks a whole lot more familiar now. <clears throat> and the Father himself which has sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think. Ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of a certain doctrine. Of who? Who's speaking here? Jesus Christ and he said and they are they which speak of me praise God and my whole thought this morning is is search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life praise God been searching the scriptures for some 30 years and the more I search them the more beautiful and clear they get praise God Praise God. Let us reach out this morning and touch the Lord before we get involved with the Word. <clears throat> We're living in a day and age that was much like the hour when Jesus Christ come to earth. There are three times in history that the cup of iniquity is filled as it is in this hour. And that is <clears throat> when it was filled the first time with Iniquity such as this that came the flood upon the earth. When it was filled with iniquity such as it is now, there came the Messiah to the earth. And now we're going to see the Messiah come back to earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. And take his children out of this mess. And uh, reading from the religious page yesterday, I thought, oh, my God, have mercy. They got some Presbyterian minister that uh, is coming to this town. <laughs> this is a good town to come to with that kind of stuff. And bringing all kinds of new insight into religion. It is none other than humanistic philosophies. And I'm going to tell you something right now, whether you know this or not. The Muslim doctrine is filled with the New Age and humanism philosophies and doctrine. So is the Hindu religion. They're very similar. And I want to tell you something. When the Beatles came to this nation, the Hinduism took over. They were absolutely given to Hinduism. Those insects really infected our young people. And then, whether you know it or not, Muslim is one of the fastest growing religions in the United States of America. Don't know whether you know that or not. They are now going to build their first big mosque in Des Moines, Iowa. And they're also preparing to build another huge mosque in Dayton, Columbus. They're preparing to build another huge mosque in Minneapolis, Minnesota. These are fertile grounds for these people. And <clears throat> unless you've been in the Middle East like I have been, uh, you don't realize how abusive these religions are. They, the things that you read in your paper don't affect you because they're not here, but they are here. And they will affect you pretty soon. But these are all the beginnings of the Antichrist. And I hate to say this in amongst the apostolics, and I don't care what religion you get into this morning, Baptist or whatever, we are infected with this humanistic New Age mess. Amen. And <clears throat> this stuff gets a hold of you before you even realize what's going on. Save the earth. They're, they're talking about 
songs now. I heard the and I heard a guy talking this week on the memorial weekend. He said, "And whatever we do, save the earth." Why do they want to save the earth for us? Because these atheists, these anti-God people, believe this is their paradise. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not trying to save the earth. I've got another place. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And I intend to go to that other place. Not when I die. <laughs> Praise God. I was talking to a man here a while back and he says, Oh yeah, I believe the Lord could come in the next 50 years. I said, Well, uh, unless I see things different than you, you're going to be about 45 years too late. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The uh, fact is there are things planned for us in the year of 1992 that we don't even know about. I don't know about. I'm just getting a little bit involved with them. But uh, I'm going to tell you something. This thing uh, that President Bush is talking about is is catching on real fast. And uh, this, uh, what do they call it, the, some kind of a new movement uh, that he's working with and he's trying to disarm the people and make them not be uh, afraid of it and all these things and yet they're taking the guns away from the people and everything else. I'm going to tell you something. You better get yourself ready to get out of here because only the Lord can straighten this out and the Lord is going to straighten this out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But I want to minister to us for a while this morning in a, in a little different way here because we have always had a group of people and for some reason <laughs> we always want something new my daughter come in last night and she was on that honor road trip and she said it wasn't exciting this time as it was last time because we knew what to expect these young people always gotta have something new you know sounds like the Grecian Praise God. It's what Paul says in the 15th chapter of Acts. Praise God. <clears throat> but there is really not anything new under the sun. It's what the Bible says. And when we, it may be new to us, but it's not new to the earth. Praise God. And so I would like for you to uh, read along with me this in the fifth chapter of John Jesus is doing some miracles here he uh, takes care of the man there at the pool of Bethesda and uh, he's sitting around waiting for the water to move and by the way sister elder and I were at the pool of Bethesda they had uncovered it the year before we got there and uh, <clears throat> it does have the five porches that the Bible says it had and so uh, Jesus heals this man. He tells him to do exactly what he can't do. That's what God's going to do every time. He's going to tell you to do exactly what you can't do. And when you do it, you're going to reap results like you never dreamed of. He told the man to take up his bed and walk. And it was impossible for him to take up his bed and walk. But when you understand who Jesus is, it was uh, only possible praise God hallelujah praise God and when he took up his bed and walked there arose a whole lot of trouble praise God because he told him to take up his bed and walk on the Sabbath day verse 18 therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him <laughs> I'm going to try to stay off of this for just a few minutes because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but also that God was his father making himself equal with God. Boy, that really got him mad. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, they were all upset about messing up their religion. That's what they was all upset about. Some 400 years from the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew, God does not even speak to nobody on the face of the earth. Take my glasses off, I can see you then. Praise God. 
I said, God didn't speak to anybody. Not one person did God talk to for 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. And in that 400 years, <laughs> this nation's only 200 years, and look how messed up it is in 200. And in that 400 years, there was a complete transformation from the true Mosetic priesthood to a religious order. In other words, there were the religion, I've been all through the tabernacle and, and what they call Herod's temple, which is not anymore. All they have over there is a model. I've been in portions of it where Jesus stood at the night that he was condemned to death. But <clears throat> there were only Herod's temple, which was part of the outer court and some of the inner court. And there it was, they had a religious order, but it was far, far, far from what God had given Moses to institute amongst his people to practice clear up until the day of the destruction of Jerusalem. Praise God. Let me give you some idea. There's the Sadduceans of that day. These were the aristocrats. And when I read these things, you're going to hear, I don't have anything against somebody that has money. Somebody that has money needs to be saved just like somebody that doesn't have money. Praise God, because they still die of cancer. They still have divorces. They still have alcoholic problems. Amen. And some of the biggest dope pushers today are affluent people. <laughs> some of you know. <laughs> He's better than I do. Praise God. <clears throat> but... Um, the Sadducean's religious order of that day was they denied the supernatural. As I read these things off tonight, uh, this morning, I want you to understand nothing has changed from that day to this day. I work for rich doctors and lawyers all the time. The fact is I know the lawyers so well they call me in and have coffee with them down at the courthouse. They did not believe in angels or spirits or the resurrection. Sounds a whole lot like the New Age movement, don't it? Brother Carricker says something to me. These chaplains out here at this prison are so far from being a man of the cloth that it would absolutely astound you, and I don't think I had to explain that to some of you. Some of you know from the inside instead of the outside. But uh, <clears throat> thank God I don't know it that way. <laughs> I know it, well, I do know it from the inside, but not because I've been there, but because I have to deal with them. But uh, uh, they are so far from being really God's man that it's unreal. But yet, they are capable of discerning some things. Brother Carricker told me about a week ago, he said, these chaplains out there realize with these prisoners that they're dealing with demon spirits. And he said, isn't it amazing that you go to these churches of these affluent people and they'll deny there is such things. Oh, I've sit and talked with some of these ministers. How can you believe such things? Well, I'd like to know how they came. Jesus talks about the devil about as much as he talks about anything. Praise God. Fact is, whether you know it or not, not in, not in order, but some scholar who is took more time to figure out the Bible than I have, says that about every seventh verse of the Bible applies to hell and demonic spirits and Satan. Praise God. And <clears throat> yet, the reason why is 
people want to get away from thinking they're spirits and demons and stuff is so that they can educate themselves above that plane because by education, by educating yourself enough, you won't be a criminal anymore. Well, they're still preaching it. It was in your paper this week. I, I study these things, folks. I look at these things close. You know, a lot of it, of course, some folks, it, it amazes you what they said. Can't even read the newspaper in this country anymore. <clears throat> no wonder you tell the American people, anything. we're going to be like India pretty soon. You can tell the American people anything, and they'll go do it. Because they're a bunch of illiterates. But boy, when you get a country full of illiterates, it's not a safe place to live. I'm going to tell you that for sure. Praise God. But <clears throat> nobody, literally, no, you, you can push the fact out there's not demon spirits. You can push the fact out there's no resurrection so I don't have to answer to God for nothing. Uh, you can push the idea out, you know, uh, there's no supernatural. You couldn't hear from God. There are religions today that will tell you you can't hear from God. I had a woman sit in this church for about 15 years who was the adult teacher of the ladies in the Church of Christ. And that's why she come to this church is because they said she's losing her mind because she heard from God. Yeah, some of you know Sister Keller real well, like I do. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there are religions. Well, they kick who is it, Pat Boone out of their church because of the supernatural. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. They do not believe in the supernatural. I'm going to tell you something. God can make an eyeball. It's nothing for Him to heal it. Hallelujah. Uh, somebody said, well, how's God going to give you a new kidney? Well, let me ask you something. How did God give you the first two you had? Now, if you can answer that, I'll answer your question. Hallelujah. If I was God, I'd give you all the answers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know how he can and how he does, but I know he does. Praise God. And all I have to do is know, uh, do is know hallelujah, that he does. That's all I have to do. And I don't, if God would give me millions of dollars today, I would never want them things to influence me to the fact that uh, I didn't need God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I don't think I have to worry about it, but <clears throat> unless somebody wins a lottery and comes in here and pays an awful lot of tithes or something, then we'll know who and who don't play the lottery, won't we? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. But the Pharisees, now the Pharisees were quite contrary to the Sadducees. And it was the Pharisees that crucified Jesus, if you don't know that. Praise God. And the Pharisees were very similar to the New Testament Christians. There were, in other words, there was a lot of things that the New Testament Christian preached that they could accept. They could accept the resurrection. They could accept uh, supernatural happenings. They had the scroll of Isaiah. And they could see where Elijah had performed 14 miracles and Elijah had performed 7 miracles. Fact is, they accused Jesus of being Elias. Praise God. Others said that he was Moses because he himself said he was the lawgiver. <laughs> Ooh, I felt a chill go up my back on that one. Hallelujah. Praise God. He was the lawgiver. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, so then uh, they accused him of being like John the Baptist because he could take a whip and run him out of the temple because they had made the house of prayer a den of thieves. 
In other words, he was a man of authority. Everybody's trying to get rid of authority today. You can't get rid of authority and have anything. <laughs> I still pay attention to the policeman. A lot of times I think he's wrong, but I pay attention anyhow. Praise God. You better pay attention. You can say, well, I don't have to pay attention to you. Well, they'll put you somewhere where you can pay more attention. Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so, uh, he was the lawgiver, and they believed he was the lawgiver. And there was a lot. Jesus, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and he came to Jesus by night, and he was a follower of Jesus, a secret disciple of Jesus. I'm glad I'm not a secret disciple. I have seen in my lifetime secret disciples of Jesus. I had a doctor's wife that was a secret disciple. She left with a great testimony. I baptized her in Jesus' name. She was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And to my amazement, when I found out at her death that her husband had been raised around one of his Pentecostals all of his life, but would not even consider because he was trained by his family to hear them instead of the word. Praise God. And he died with her. Their plane went down in an awful fiery crash. And uh, <clears throat> I was glad that one Sunday morning when she came, I was, I don't know, you, you never know when the Spirit of God gets on you what you're going to do. And uh, I was unusually harsh about Jesus' name baptism that morning. Sister uh, Vivian said, yes, amen, praise God. And Virginia, she was sitting in the congregation of the old church, which was about a third as big as the interior of this building, and, and she was much closer to the pulpit than a lot of you are. And uh, boy, she was ever more mad. And she let me have it before she went out the door. And uh, I thought, well, at least, praise God, she heard it once, you know. But about 3 o'clock that afternoon, she called me up and she said, if I've got to be baptized in Jesus' name to be saved, I want to be baptized. I said, when? Now. Okay, get over here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so here she came, and I baptized her in Jesus' name, and she took off with her husband up north, called me up one night, real early. You remember, Sister Ellie, about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning? 3 o'clock? Praise God. I know it sure was a long time between last dark and early daylight. <clears throat> Praise God. And... She said, Brother Elder, you know who this is? And I didn't know because I wasn't used to that voice on the phone. She said, this is Virginia Scott. I said, oh, how are you doing? Hadn't seen her for a while. She said, I'm doing great. I just got the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. Praise God. I said, you're doing better than I thought you was. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There's nothing like it. <clears throat> nothing like it. There's not anything like it. Anywhere you ever go, you'll never find anything like it. And you see, these people were absolutely disturbed because that Jesus had disturbed their doctrine. Praise God. I'm not worried about a doctrine. I'm worried about what the Word of God says. And it is a fact that they wasn't supposed to do anything on the Sabbath day. They killed a man, the Bible said, for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. But evidently, they didn't keep the Sabbath as good as uh, they contended they did because Jesus said if you had an ox stuck in a ditch, would you wait till Sunday? I've been in Israel. I know all about their timepieces and all that stuff. And it's a funny place on Saturday. Ain't nothing moves except us visitors. And uh, you can move, but you won't get into nothing. Everything's closed. It's a strange place. They don't keep time like we do. At 6 o'clock in the evening, the day's over. The new day begins. At 6 o'clock in the evening, man, the place opens up, and they go wild. Shop, do whatever you want to. Praise God. The Sabbath's over. And Jesus said to them, you got an ox stuck in the ditch, you're going to wait till 6 o'clock this evening? 
He knew they wouldn't do it. He'd been watching them. Oh, my God, did I ever get a lesson over there? My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. Whew, I got a good lesson on that one. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so you see, they did not realize that he that was speaking to them was the Sabbath. He was the lawgiver of the Sabbath. You never find ever again the fourth commandment mentioned in the New Testament. It's only mentioned in the Old Testament. Never again mentioned in the New Testament. Because he is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath simply means a cessation or pause. Praise God. And so Jesus was that cessation and that pause between the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Praise God. You never read in the New Testament where they gather on the Sabbath except when you're talking about those that are still adhering to the old Jewish customs and those that are, well, they didn't even gather then. At any day, the, the, the heathens, they gathered out on Mars Hill to do whatever they pleased to do because it's kind of like the colleges around here where we'll all get out here and get our philosophies out and see who's the smartest. Come up with the weirdest. Praise God. <laughs> I'm not running college down now. Got some girls I hope to go to college and learn something. Praise God. Hallelujah. I learned something worth learning. I was sitting at my supper table and I said, oh, I'd hate to go to college for eight, nine years to come out that dumb. If I went to college, I'd want to come out smart. Praise God. Amen. And uh, not smart Alec, but, you know, Learn something worth learning while I was in there. Praise God. And so <clears throat> Jesus looked at them and he makes a, a statement to them that is absolutely astounding. And uh, he, he said to them, Why well, I started, And the Father himself which has sent me hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time. Now I know one thing, that just ever more upset him. That really upset them. Uh, because they was always in front of the people. God said. You know, I even get skeptical of people in our group that says, the Lord told me. And some folks worry me to death. The Lord's always talking to them and He never talks to me. We stars are spiritual, some of you folks. My God, He talks to you every week in visions and dreams and everything else. And I just have to keep studying and praying and reading the Bible. But he talks to me too. And he don't have to give me a dream to talk to me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You against dreams, Brother Elder? Nope. I've had God give me dreams. But I don't live on dreams. Tell you what, people get to living on dreams and visions. Next thing you know, they're going wild and way out and everything else. Saying God said, God this, God that, and God didn't do nothing. They're going to be just like old Balaam. God said, and there's an angel of God standing there fixing to whack his head off because he's going exactly the wrong direction. Listening to the wrong thing. Hello. Praise God. That was to the sheep, wasn't it? Praise God. Now. He's got them mad because he said, You have never heard from him, and neither have you at any time seen his shape. I've had folks tell me they've seen God. I had one woman, I believe, seen something about God. Sister Mary Bueller was back there where Sister uh, Susie's a sitting. Same pew, almost in the same spot on a Friday night in a revival and she, she, she said Brother Elder I had a vision in church night well lots of folks have visions and things want me to interpret them and all them things and 
I just can't interpret a whole lot of it. <clears throat> Praise God. Sometimes the vision's for you, you know. The dream's for you. And uh, sometimes I can interpret it. But I'm not Daniel. Neither am I Joseph. I don't give myself to dreams and visions. Hallelujah. And so she said, Brother Elder, she said, I had a vision that the Lord was standing here before me. Now, it was right here in the church house. How how's come everybody else didn't see it? I didn't see nothing. I didn't see a thing. I was standing here looking out there all night long. I never seen nothing. But she said, I had a vision that the Lord was standing here, right here in the church, Brother Elder. And, and I was at his feet, and he was holding out his hands to me and saying to me, come on, come on home with me. So what do you think that means? I said to myself, if it really means what you said, sister, probably ain't going to be around here with us too much longer. But I looked at her and I said, I don't know what it means. And I got in my car and drove out of here that night. Drove to Little Rock, Arkansas. I was going to preach there Sunday morning, Sunday night. And when I got into the driveway of Brother Gene Sorrells, uh, he uh, come out, his face was looking funny, and I said, uh-oh, something back home's went wrong, huh? He said, yes, sir. He said, one of your sisters in your church died while you was on the highway down here. I said, really? I said, probably was Sister Mary Bueller. That's her. Twenty-nine years old. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine years old. Took her to the hospital, examined her, everything. Gave her artificial respiration and everything else. No cause, no known reason for death. Just death. Praise God. Praise God. Because when the Lord wants you, He's going to take you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's one vision I know somebody had. Hallelujah. The Bible said, by the fruit you shall know. You can always tell. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and, but there's a lot of folks running around. I've seen the Lord. This one woman told me one time she knew she had the Holy Ghost. And I said, how's that? And she said, well, there's a dove sitting out there on the telephone wire. And I was there wrecking my porch. The leaves around my porch and the dove flew off of the telephone wire and sat down on my head. I said, hmm, praise God. That's not the way I got the Holy Ghost in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad I got it like they got it in the book of Acts. Praise God. Hallelujah. I didn't get no dove sitting on me. <laughs> it probably was a dove, but <laughs> it didn't. Thank God it was a spiritual dove. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so Jesus looked at these fellows. He didn't accuse them of being just a bunch of ignoramuses and things. But he said, uh, you need to take a closer look at the scriptures. What he said. He didn't say uh, they searched the scriptures. He said, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. You know, even we can get off. Uh, I'm not just going to go entirely on speaking in tongues. There's a lot of folks doing stuff like that today, and they're not getting anywhere. They're, they're going way out there in left field somewhere. Amen. Praise God. And, of course, I kind of got some things to say about that anyhow, if I really got down on it. But, uh, yeah, I don't believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to give us the spirit of air. He said, if ye be an evil know how to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly Father know how to give the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. But the problem is, folks are trying to live today without the Scriptures. You can't live without this Bible. This is one thing. This is one thing we know we got from God. We know we got this. And this will testify of itself. 
Tell you something else too, honey. When the whole world's passing away, this is going to be right here to judge everything. Don't run off in your little dreams and visions. Have them, but make sure they line up with this. Praise God. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> Jesus said, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Look in the scriptures. There are so many things that, that we could begin to get out of the scriptures. They, they forsook Jesus Christ and hung him and put him on a tree and got rid of him. And, of course, the only good thing come out of that is you and I got to be saved out of that. Praise God. But had they accepted him, millennium would have started and you and I would have been in, in a bad way. And so therefore he blinded them in part a purpose so you and I could be brought into this glorious truth this morning. <clears throat> they just could not see him. They adhered to their old traditions. Their old, they, and when I was in Israel, I don't mind telling you something, the star of David and the law of Moses <laughs> You better be careful how you speak about the star of David and the law of Moses over there. Uh, you being an, uh, an American that just gets you kicked out of the country. But if you're anybody else, could get you killed. They shot 14 of their own students while Sister Elder and I was there at the Hebrew University because you don't stand up against that government over there. Praise God. Oh, they don't live like we live over here. They still live eye for eye and tooth for tooth. And they mean it. Praise God. But in the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the 26th verse, God speaking through this prophet said, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away your stony heart. This, this is coming in Israel right now. You just heard that brother Jonathan Urshan who goes to Israel quite a bit you just heard and he told me that there is now starting to be a real genuine move in Israel of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name baptism praise God of the original church from the book of Acts and uh, we had a church over there they burned it up three times but there is now a real movement starting over there and God said a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away your stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit, the Holy Ghost, within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes. The Holy Ghost is what's going to cause you to walk in the Word of God. Love the Word of God. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Ye shall keep my judgments and do do them. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 28, 11, and 12, Isaiah seen more of the church than any prophet in the Old Testament. I could absolutely took the, take the book of Isaiah and preach the gospel we preach today. Praise God. But in Isaiah, the 28th chapter and the 11th verse, for with stammering lips... And another tongue will he speak to this people. Now the Jew does not make reference like that. The Jew prophet always speaks to my people. When he sees the Jews, he knows them are his people. And whether you want to admit or not, they're prejudiced. They're not prejudiced in the fact of colors like we are. Like we shouldn't be. Hello. They're prejudiced in the fact of their religion. In other words, if you're not a Jew, you don't have the Jewish religion, you're just not anything. And so when the prophet spoke, he always said, when he seen his people in prophecy, he said, my people. But Isaiah sees a people here he does not recognize, and he says to this people, this is a foretelling prophecy of a time to come praise God and he said for with stammering lips and another tongue 
will he speak to this people? Now, you would think with that uh, in the Bible that uh, everybody would jump on that and say, ooh, glory to God, hallelujah, look, this really is for us. But that's not what the Bible said. That's not what the Bible said. Because God, knowing everything from the beginning to the end, knows what's going to happen in every dispensation of time and the people. And he knows the people that's going to be steep in their traditions. I'm going to tell you, tradition can blind you. Can suffocate you. Some of you. Well, we might as well admit it. Apostolic Pentecostals are made up more out of Baptists than anybody. That's truth. Hallelujah. Of course, around here, a lot of Catholics have been converted. Praise God. But we have more people who used to be Baptist than anybody. And of course, thank God, we have a lot of folks that sinners. truth but I got out of it when I got in the army and I found out it wasn't worth living that way so I got back into where I knew it belonged praise God but I've been with a lot of friends and a lot of places and a lot of churches <clears throat> but the Lord looking down through the age of time look what he says to whom he said this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest now I know some of you think I'll jump way off of something but you're going to watch me come back and this is the reef Refreshing, and what do you say? And yet they will not hear. Praise God. We're getting into a day and age when people are starting to think about speaking in tongues. Starting to realize there's more to it than what they thought there was. And there's ever seems like everything's starting to speak in tongues. Amen. And I never said that the speaking in tongues would be the issue of the last day. That's not what I said. I've preached for 20-some years. The issue of the last hour will be the name, not the tongues. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so, you see, uh, when we begin to look at this, we understand that tradition has kept these people, and the Lord knew this, because he being God knows all things. And so he put it in the mouth of the prophet, and yet they will not hear. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> let us turn to St. John uh, 14, and I'm going to show you something that I didn't really get off of my subject that I started with. St. John 14 and 20 Jesus says, at that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father. I'm in my Father. And my Father's in me. <laughs> oh, God, I, ain't, I, I, might get, I might touch around on the Godhead a little bit this morning. Praise God. Kind of hard for us apostolics to preach without getting on the Godhead, isn't it? Praise God. Hallelujah. But uh, he said, I'm in my Father, and my Father's in me. Well, that's exciting just to learn that much. But here's what's really exciting. And he said, and I shall be in you. Woo! Hallelujah. Now, what are you talking about? Jesus understood that he was the rest. He was the Sabbath. That's the reason when they, they hissed at him about the Sabbath, you don't see him in contention with them about the Sabbath because he was the lawgiver. But he is also the pause. He is also the cessation of a change. And he said, you ought to get in the Bible. You ought to get in the scriptures and search them further. You'll find out who I am. For they are they which testify of me. Hallelujah. Had they known he was the lawgiver of the Sabbath, who cares then what he does? Because anything he does is right. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. He has the right to change. You and I don't have the right to change the law. But the lawgiver does. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now when I go to Colossians. When I go to Colossians. I really get excited. <laughs> Praise God. Colossians is quite a, a book. When you really get into the book of Colossians. It's heavenly. It's gigantic. That's what it means. Gigantic. And, uh, <clears throat> and Paul really gets into something when he gets into the colossal. Praise God. See? Among you. You like mysteries? Get this one solved. Hallelujah. If you like mysteries, get this one solved. This is better than most. This is better than any of the mysteries you'll ever check out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, he said... Among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Colossians, 1 Corinthians 5.19. To witness that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And then you get this idea that it is Christ in us. Jesus said in that day. He said, the Holy Ghost shall come in my name, Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost shall come in my name. And then he said, I shall be in you. Praise God. What are you talking about? With stammering lips and another tongue. Well, this is going to be the rest. That's why a lot of you are not no longer in dope, alcohol. Carrying on movies that promote such lust of the flesh. Hello? Why? Because he gave us rest. He gave us peace. He gave us genuine, real salvation. That cut us out. That sanctified us. Set us apart from him. How many of you are glad the Lord came into your heart like that? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Woo! I'm glad. I'm at rest. A lot of shooting going on in my neighborhood last night. Police said, what kind of guns do you think there was? I said, I think probably between a 32 and a 38. Thought about it. Could have been a 25 pop gun. People yelling and carrying on. I don't know what happened. All I know is the whole neighborhood after I called police filled up with police cars. <laughs> Praise God. I'm glad. I'm glad. I got rest. I'm also glad for the police. I had some guns in the house. I could have loaded them up and shot back. But you know, I'd rather the police do the shooting. It's a lot better for me to go to bed and say, thank God for the blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. I suppose some of you can make something out of that. I meant the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It sends peace to your troubled soul. Praise God. I went to bed in my right mind last night. I wasn't drunk out. I wasn't in that party. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Wasn't, I wasn't toked up, smoked up, a few other things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, if you got, you got it. If you don't, you don't. It's just simple as that. Hallelujah. But I've got peace. I spoke in tongues. Woo. I got in place last night in the hallway. I didn't even want to leave this place. I said, oh, Lord, you'll be wanting to clean this place up. Praise God. Hallelujah. But there was peace come down on me in that hallway. And I'm telling you what, I'm got talking to the Lord. And I like that place. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. It's peace. Christ in me. I, I've got the sure 
telltale sign he's there because I spoke in tongues. Just like the original church. A few weak amens out there, but it's the truth in him. You know, when you get to thinking who Jesus is, it is something. It really is something. Old Paul is sitting in that prison right to Colossian church. How many of you would like to hear something colossal? Praise God. He's sitting there right. I can just see old Paul going up and down. And he's praying, fasting, seeking God. I got to write to the Colossian church. What am I going to write, God? Praise God. I got to write something to these people they can understand. They can link up to uh, these people are philosophers. They're always into something gigantic. And you was here last Sunday night and heard me preach. I was into something gigantic. When you get beyond this Milky Way to 64 galaxies you've never seen before. Whew. And, the, and the sun out there, 93 million miles away. <clears throat> we haven't even invented anything to get out there yet. Hallelujah. This thing's gigantic. By his hand, he threw him into place. <laughs> Whew, what a hand. What power. Praise God. That's why they call them stars. It means strewing. Praise God. And this is the way these Colossians think. They was thinking gigantic. And uh, they're, they're, they're always thinking about Mars and Venus and Jupiter and Saturn. All these, you know. Praise God, and they're thinking way out there, and what they know, what they knew about Mars wasn't enough to even talk about. Praise God, but there they are. They're great philosophers out on Mars hills, you know, and they're getting with it. Praise God, and old Paul said, "I got to reach into something, and I got to get a hold of something that's far more gigantic than this." Praise God. Let's turn over to back to Isaiah. I love Isaiah, man. Isaiah, the 24th chapter. I can preach out Isaiah all the time. I love Isaiah. God, I love this chapter. I love this book. Praise God. Have mercy. Isaiah 44, he's, he's teaching the whole bunch of Israelites. What do you get excited about the guy who cuts down the tree? What do you get excited about the carpenter's hands, how smooth he is? You know, uh, I'm a carpenter. <laughs> it's not very easy to build cabinets, make them look nice. You say, well, if you know how it is, yeah. You don't have the know-how, let's see you do it. You don't have the tools, let's see you do it. And, uh, and here he is, he's talking about these guys that skill with their hand. I love my electric planer. Since I got my electric planer, I'd never go back to that hand. Whew. Praise God. And... Uh, Guy watched me work with that thing about a month or two ago. He said, my, so I've never seen a piece of wood cut down, shaped, fit in so fast in all my life. Just, you know, you do it all the time. Just something. Praise God. You can, I like to watch old brother Moody. Now, he's a hand carver. Got to have the right tools for that, too. Carve all kind of little things in the wood. It makes it look pretty, you know. He builds a lot of houses and stairways and things for millionaires. And, uh... <clears throat> And so, uh, old Isaiah was watching this. And, uh, and they brought the fir trees from Lebanon. And he watched it. And he said, what kind of God is there against our God? He watched them work with stone. I like to go to Silver Dollar City and watch them put that clay on a wheel and stuff with it. Praise God. Amen. Take that clay and make a nice little vase put it over there and bake it and spray it with ceramic stuff and do you know people make them gods you don't have to serve God you can make your God but after you made him what you got can't see you can't hear you he didn't put the stars where they're at he didn't hang the sun where it's at Woo. hallelujah and listen to, listen to Isaiah in Isaiah 44 and verse 23 Sing, heavens, for the Lord's done it. <laughs> Woo, go ahead, you Israelites, and father these heathens if you want to, but uh, you're cheating yourself. <laughs> Praise God. Break forth into singing your mountains, O force, and every tree therein. Hey, the tree's going to worship God. You may worship the tree, but the tree's going to worship God. 
Hallelujah. The Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified him in Israel. That's another subject altogether. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Now that's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which means Jehovah God. The self-sufficient God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. That formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord, Jehovah God, that maketh all things, that stretched forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. <laughs> mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Paul in Colossians, the first chapter, says, You want something gigantic? Okay. I think I got something gigantic to give you here. Praise God. So in the first chapter of Colossians, in the eleventh verse, he starts in Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joy joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us to be partaker of the inheritance. Boy, I'm gonna get I'm gonna preach this one these Sunday night. I'm going to preach this. This one's getting a hold of me like, man, the saints in light. There's a lot of difference in being a saint in light and a saint in darkness. Whew. And I'm going to preach that one. That one's getting a hold of me real good. Hallelujah. Oh, he's only speaking to the saints in light. Because if you're not a saint in light, you're not going to get a hold of this. You're not going to see the veil of flesh. The flesh of Jesus Christ became a veil which people could not pass through. It became a stone of stumbling to the Jews and a rock of offense to the Gentiles. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now listen to this now. Who hath delivered us from the powers of darkness. I wonder how many of you are glad of that. And hath translated us into the kingdom of the Trinity. Huh? Who didn't put us in the Trinity. It put us in the kingdom of his dear son. Ooh, hallelujah. Mm. Now listen to this. For by who? By who? Who's him? Jesus Christ. Huh? Is that right? For by him were all things created. You Colossians want something gigantic? Get a hold of this. Jesus Christ is the one that created all things. <laughs> Whoo! But over there it said Jehovah Lord God did, which is supposed to be his father. Hello? I'm telling you this morning, I'm glad I'm a saint in light. That I'm not walking in darkness. That I know Jesus is the Father. And Jesus is the Son. And Jesus is the Holy Ghost. And thank God there's only one. For by Jesus Christ were all things created that is created. He looked at Philip. He said, what in the world's wrong with you, boy? Been walking with you for years. Huh? Caused the, caused the sea to shut up. You was there. He said, I walked up to the woman that was weeping over her son that was dead in a box. And I raised him to life. You was there. You've seen me cast those demons, legions of demons, out of Martha. Whoever else did you see cast demons out? Man, that old boy come running up to Jesus. You know, hogs are smarter than human beings. Hogs don't want devils in them, and human beings don't mind them being around.
That lunatic come up to Jesus. You know why he came to Jesus? He wanted help. You know why he came to Jesus? He wanted free. You know why he came to Jesus? He knew the only one that could do it. And he come running up, boy, he was loaded up. Now, I can tell you a good way to find out when you got a lot of devils in you. You want to know how to find out when you got a lot of devils in you? When you start pulling all your clothes off and start running around outside like you're free. That's how you know you got devils in you. The more God you got in you, the more clothes you put on. The less God you got in you, the more you'll take off. Amen. Old boy took all of his clothes off and ran around. He thought he was in a nudist camp. He was. His own. Hallelujah. But he ran up to Jesus. Devils just don't crying out of him. And he said, Lord, help me. Hmm. And then people in town got scared. People didn't want them devils loose. So Jesus put them in the hogs. And you'd think in Israel they'd be glad for the hogs to die, but they wasn't. They got mad. All the time I was in Israel, I'd never seen a hog. And I suppose they got them somewhere over there, but i never seen one. I was from one side to the other. Praise God. Them devils went them hogs. Them hogs took off, boy, and they found them a cliff and jumped into the river and killed themselves. Said, we don't want these devils in us. <laughs> I know a lot of folks, the more devils they get, the happier they get. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's, he's giving them some colossal gigantic understanding here to the saints in light in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins now who are we talking about we're talking about jesus huh are we talking about jesus who is jesus he is the image he is the image jesus is the image jesus is the image of the invisible god how, how in the world did you get to listen he said, I'll give you a little more colossal information. In Colossians 3, what is it? 6? Where's Sister Elder? 2 and 9? Yeah. And, boy, boy, jump clear over to this one. Colossians 2 and 9. Right there with me. He's, he's still on the same subject. Still talking to them people. And he's still talking about Jesus Christ. And he said, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ is the only body in the Godhead. Praise God. There ain't going to be no two thrones. There ain't going to be no three thrones. There's one throne and one that's set upon the throne. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And there are going to be 12 thrones around it, and I know who's going to be sitting on that. Hallelujah. Woo, I'm going to be glad to get in the part of that. Hallelujah. I don't know exactly where some folks are going to fit in, but I know where I'm going to fit in because I know where the four beasts come in at. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, he said he's the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Hmm. Hello? You ever see God, you'd see it in the form of Jesus Christ. He said, you never seen me or born my shape at any time. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by them and for them. Huh? Every time I get to talking to a Trinitarian, it's got to be them. But we believe in three and one. Oh, come on. Come on. We don't believe in oil. Praise God. We don't believe in no three and one. We believe in one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt serve him. Him. 
with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Not them. Don't come to me about different personalities because when you come about different personalities, you're talking about different people. There's no different people there. Jesus said, I am he. Before me there was no God for me, neither shall there be after me. That's what Jehovah God said. Hello? Oh, yes, he did. You got trouble with that, folks. If you believe in more than one person in the Godhead, you got a lot of trouble with that. In Isaiah 43 and 10. Praise God. Jesus, my God, was supposed to teach just like they did in the sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. That's the way we're supposed to raise our children. That's the things we're supposed to teach them. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You're going to put it on the frontlets of your doorpost. When people come in, they're going to find out there's only one God, and Him only shalt thou serve. Praise God. And you're going to put it here and there and everywhere you go. They're going to find out you only believe in one God. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad we know we only believe in one God? Whew. Now listen, in Isaiah 43 and 10, he said, You're my witnesses, saith the Lord, that's Jehovah God, and my servant, who I am chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he, and before me there was no God form, and neither shall there be after me. Ye, I Even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Jesus Christ hadn't died yet. How could there be a Savior? But this is Jehovah God saying, And beside me there is no Savior, because he knew down from his glory. Hallelujah! You can tell the everlasting story. He robed himself in flesh. And became the Son of God. Hallelujah. But this one ain't going to fail. Because the first one was Adam like us. But this one's God Almighty. <laughs> Woo, and he can't fail. There was no evil found in him. And there was no God found in him. You can't find anything wrong with him. He's born of a virgin. Total untold story. Completely impossible. But with God all things are possible. Praise God. Matthew 1 and 23. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is not a God with us. But God with us. Jesus understood. He said, hey, why don't you search them scriptures? If you understood who I was, I am the law giver. I am the rest. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, turn to St. John 1 and 1. Oh, hallelujah. Here's a good one. I love to put this one into its place with the rest of the scriptures. Oh, praise God. What marvelous light. Now, I can't preach this one this morning. There ain't enough time to preach this one this morning. In the beginning was the Word. <laughs> Y'all know me. You've been here more than one Sunday. You know how I preach on that. Hallelujah. Bless God the apple was before the seed and the chicken was before the egg. Hallelujah. Amen. God said and apple trees jumped out of the ground. Hallelujah. God said, and chickens started running all over the place. Deer, antelope, and everything else. When God said, Psalms 148, and he worship him, you sun, worship him, you stars, worship him, you host of heaven, worship him, you creatures of the earth, worship him. And he gets into a long dissertation, and he said, for he commanded, in the beginning was the word. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let the uh, waters in the earth divide. And there was earth, and there was sea. And God said, God in the beginning was the Word. Hallelujah. You see, if you can understand the beginning, you can get to the end. You can figure out, my, what a mighty God we serve. This is better than all the TV movies you ever had. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word. 
And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, some Trinitarians, they like to say, well, it says when the, when, uh, 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 it said the Word was with God, that meant Jesus was with God. And what it means at all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus was born of a woman. He's the Son of God. Oh boy, you sure got me mixed up now. The seed of Abraham. But Jesus was God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And since he was God, he was with God. And the Word was God. Listen to this, verse 14. And the Word was made. The Word was. The Word was made flesh. Now the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelled among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm. Hallelujah. Gets better. What are you talking about? Paul says, I think I better write something gigantic. It's going to take a few days of praying. I can preach this to you, but you'll never get it till you study the Scriptures and pray. Jesus said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. You know, I found out that I was wrong, even interpreting scripture. I used to get up and preach Chinese proverbs. That's right. I thought they was in the Bible. My mom had always said to me when I was growing up, cleanliness is next to godliness. I just knew it was in the Bible somewhere, you know. Praise God. I don't even remember all the Chinese proverbs. I, man, I used to, and then I'd have men sitting in church. Boy, some men are good for you. You know that? I'm not afraid you come up and ask me a question. Some of you are afraid to come and ask me a question. If you know I'm in there and you don't come and ask me a question, you're not my friend. Praise God. You're just afraid. You ought not to be afraid. Because I've never hurt none of you. We sure have helped us get out of a whole lot of mess. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you something. I had some men in the church. They'd come up and say, Brother Elder! Yes, sir. They wouldn't run me down and say, You don't know nothing about the Bible and all that stuff. They'd just say, Show me that in the Bible. I'd say, Okay, I'll get it for you. I'd go home and look all week. It wasn't in there. Over the years, I've learned... Don't quote nothing if it's not in there. I know a lot of you quote my wife said, but that's still not the Word of God. Praise God. Hello. What are you talking about, brother? Searching the Scriptures. Putting them together. You can't read this like a novel. You've got to find out which one of these verses go together. Isaiah 28, 11 and 13. Here a little and there a little. Precept upon precept, line upon line. There's places it goes together. There's places you've got to find that word that this go with that. Praise God. God did it a purpose that way. Hallelujah. And so we got to search the scriptures. I'm going to close this morning. In Acts, the second chapter. There was some that just never would, ever, do some of the things that Jesus said. And they're the ones that decided to kill him. They feared the people more than they feared God. In Acts, the second chapter, I guess you know the first three or four verses. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled 
not some of the house or part of them, but it filled all of them, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of all of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Now there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad and the multitudes came together, they were confounded. I've never seen or heard this before. But if you go down through there, you'll find out that there's 17 different languages being spoken, but all these were Galileans. And they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Praise God. And Peter stood up in the 14th chapter with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. It's too early in the morning for all this carrying on. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joe, and it came to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now this, this thing going on caused such a commotion it absolutely draw people from all over the place. So there was thousands there. Three thousand added to the church on the first day. But I want you to see when some men get so steeped in their traditions and things, they're going to go ahead and do as they want to do instead of search the scripture. These men were there that Peter had watched Jesus preach to. They were there. Ananias and Cephas. Can't remember some of the others of the Sanhedrin. These are the 78 men that rule and govern the people. They were there. <clears throat> and people were adhering to Peter. Peter was absolutely, you talk about brazen, it's a miracle. He didn't get killed on the day of Pentecost. Because, boy, I mean, he went right after them dudes. He went right after their throats. This is one of the most powerful messages preached in the Bible. Because they understood all about David, their father. David said, he shall deliver my soul from hell and all these things. They understood all these translations even better than you do. That's the reason why they got mad at Jesus when he said, I am that I am. Because when he said that I am that I am, he said he made him, they said he makes himself God. They understood that and Gentiles don't understand that. When he said, I am that I am, they looked at him and they said, huh, you say, you who... You are who Moses said sent him, which was God. You call yourself God. He was God. Hallelujah. Praise God. But they never would adhere nor listen to him. And he told them to search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And listen to this. At the day God still reaches. There's nothing like the mercies of God that will reach after somebody. Nothing like it. Never. Ever. Praise God. I believe God will reach after an individual down to their last breath. Praise God. Then he stands in the 22nd verse and he said, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Come, Sister Ellie. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among, whom, among you by miracles and wonders and signs. I don't have time to get into missionary stories this morning, but many of my many of my real close friends are missionaries. Brother Donnie Hanson, my mother worked with him in Pakistan. He could not get these Muslims. They made up their mind they're going to kill him. And he thought, God, I know you sitting here to preach these people. I don't know how I'm going to reach them. And God said. Just speak and I'll be wrong. And he yelled real loud so they could understand. Is there any blind among you? Bring them here, God will heal. And they drug the blind woman up to him. She didn't even want to come to him. They drug her up to him. And he laid his hands on her and she instantly received her eyesight. Another blind woman heard it standing there. And she asked him to take her and he took her. 
she instantly received her eyesight, screaming, jumping, going wild in the midst. Another blind woman come running, instantly received her eyesight. And all of a sudden, they took off running to their villages. Here they come with everything. He thought they were coming out to kill him. But instead, they were bringing all the diseased in chairs and beds. And before the day was over, 192 people were healed and the whole village was converted to this message. Praise God. Praise God. But these men, through the ministry of Jesus Christ, were able to shove off his divine miracles. And Peter looked at them and said, a man that was approved by God by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, ye yourselves know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God you have by taken by wicked hands. You crucified him. And you slayed him. You didn't want to hear no more of this. You thought if you got rid of Jesus, <laughs> you got rid of it all. I don't think you're ready for this next verse though. Here they are speaking in tongues. Here is this miraculous power again. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Here is the revelation that he is God manifested in the flesh. Baptized in Jesus name for the remission of sins. We don't baptize in Jesus name just to be doing something. It's for the remission of sins like the Bible said. To get your sins washed off of you. Because only his name and his blood can do it. Praise God. Now listen to this. Whom God raised up. You couldn't stop him. And loose the pains of death. Because it was not possible. That he should be holding. What you did was. And Paul said this in Corinthians to the devil. He said if the devil would have known what he was did. He'd have never had the Lord crucified. Praise God. But what he did was. When you killed him. When you hung him on a tree. You turned him loose. Uh, to where he could come back. Uh, and be in every one of us. Uh, and set us free. And spread his power. Faster than he ever could. Praise God. Oh, it's not just a story this morning. I'm glad I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I'm glad I've been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm glad for the miraculous working power in us. Hallelujah. Somebody says, tell me stories. I don't like to tell stories because it seems like you're lifting yourself up. Uh, praise God. And I'd rather lift up Jesus Christ uh, than lift up man any day. Praise God. But I want to tell you something. I have laid hands on the blind and they have received their sight. Uh, I have laid hands on cancer and they have been healed uh, and have seen heart attacks stop just like that and their hearts healed and lived for years praise God amen God has performed many miracles everyone in here delivered off a of dope that's a miracle of Jesus Christ everybody delivered off of alcohol it's a miracle of Jesus Christ you go to their you go to their little systems of alcoholism and they don't work they're all still drinking alcohol anonymous is a fake and a failure because they deny the power of Jesus Christ. But brother, when you get the power of Jesus Christ, there goes the bottle. When you get the power of Jesus Christ, there goes the dope needle. When you get the power of Jesus Christ in you, there goes the cigarettes. There goes the filthy TV. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I've been set free. I've been set free for whom the, if the Father has given His Spirit. He is free. Whew. I don't go around saying, I can't watch television because I go to that church. I don't go around saying, I can't smoke cigarettes 
Because I go to that church. Bless God, I say. Oh boy said to me, if you're such a man, he said, why don't you light one up? I said, if you're such a man, why don't you throw yours away? Right. Hallelujah! Right. Hallelujah! It takes more power to get rid of them than it does to light one up. If I was you this morning, I'd run to this altar. I'd get the Holy Ghost in me this morning. <laughs> Woo! I wouldn't be bound. <laughs> I love it when our black brothers get up. They got a, I think, we, yeah, Brother uh, Young got to singing it in here the other night. They sing a song. I love to hear them sing. I won't be bound no more. I won't be bound no more. I won't. Somebody said, all that religious stuff, that's bondage. Uh-uh, honey. You're the one that's in bondage. Yeah, you're the one that's in bondage. I'm going to tell you something. I'm in bondage. Paul said, I'm in bondage to Jesus Christ. i tell you who you're in bondage to. You're in bondage to your flesh and to the devil. But I'd rather be in bondage to Jesus Christ. Pour it on me, God. Pour it on me, God. Pour some more on me, God. Oh, hallelujah. I ain't going to be bound no more. Cigarettes, you can't make me puff. Woo! I don't think Brother Albright smoked another cigarette, has he? He walked in there. Oh, he's a sinner man. Well, he thought he was saved. He walked in that vestibule. I didn't tell him he wasn't saved, did I, Sister Albright? He can't help nobody tell me and say, Hallelujah. He walked in there and he said, Brother Elder, I don't want to smoke you cigarettes no more. You know what I sensed in him? I sensed in him the truth. Now, there's a lot of folks say, Pray for me, Brother Elder, that I won't smoke no more because as soon as church shouts, I'm going to smoke two or three more. I said, I ain't praying for this mess. Hallelujah. But I sensed he was serious. He really didn't want to be bound in those things anymore. And I said, Brother O'Brien, do you really believe God can take you off of that cigarette? He said, yes, sir. He does. He's got a lot of faith. I like that. Praise God. So we just laid our hands on him right there in that vestibule. I don't even think Sister Albright had the Holy Ghost, did you? I just looked at her. I said, lay your hands on him. We're going to pray. She thought, my God, what am I going to pray? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And we prayed that nicotine devil off of him. And as far as I know, he hadn't puffed anymore. You know, I never did want God to do me like some folks. Oh, Brother Unruh said, now, God, he said, if this cigarette's wrong, just knock me out. Just flatten me out. My oh, God, I'd rather speak a little easier to me. <laughs> Praise God. So he just went in there in that cabinet and got his cigarettes out, and he lit one up, and kaplap, he hit the floor. Knocked him slap out. About to burn himself to death when he woke up. Praise God. He got up and wadded him up and throwed him out. He said, That's good enough. <laughs> he had to learn everything the hard way. I love that old man. He's the one who gave us the property to build this building. I wish that old soldier was still here. You you folks wouldn't know what to do with that old man. 74 years old, he wouldn't come to no dead church service. He could be dead if he wanted to, but when he got through, he was going to be alive. He'd start marching around these walls and singing until something happened. Bless God, he'd seen somebody sick. He'd run over and lay hands on and pray for him. Something's going to happen. This is going to be an apostolic church service. Hallelujah. Praise God. He come up to me one day and he said, Brother Elder. I said, what? 
He said, all of my hay washed down to my neighbor. Of course, you know, the farmers sometimes don't get along with each other too good. I said, good. He looked at me, big eye. He said, what is that? I said, until you start paying tithes on what God does for you, I hope he washes it all away. Oh, God, you don't have to give it to my neighbors no more. I'll pay my tithes. Praise God. 